There's that saying that uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, uh, for some Ravens fans with Lamar Jackson, that has been the case in his absence. Their heart has grown fonder of Lamar. And other Ravens fans, they've just been like, you know what? It is what it is, and that's what it's going to be. So, uh, in this first comment, not even really a question, it's comment, statement, claim, take, whatever you want to call it, uh, from a Ravens fan. He has some, some powerful words. Uh, directed at the Ravens and Lamar Jackson uh, Before we get into it I gotta give a special shout out to the newest team Keep it clean patron uh, My guy Emerson Now we get into this first comment it came from my guy Kevin uh, Who is a team keep it clean patron So I appreciate you Been one for about a month So thank you for that Now he said This is what I'll say I love Lamar He got knocked out uh, three years ago against Buffalo Missed December the last two seasons At some point you have to realize You're not bigger than the Ravens We will be the Ravens with or without you I love Lamar but Hey, y'all know what we always say When people say that, you know what's coming But anyway, I love Lamar, but no player can stop what we've built We run the ball, play defense, and that's where the money goes, period Oh, I, I, I just, let's just break it down Let's get right into it, um, piece by piece So, I love Lamar, knocked out, uh, he got knocked out the past three years Or, yeah, three years against Buffalo, missed the past two Decembers So, why did he get knocked out? Uh, he, offensive line it was all offensive line issues. Um, so many people love to do the whole, oh, Lamar, he, he runs so much, so he's going to get hurt running. Nope, that wasn't what it was. And you didn't say that it was that, but I just had to address that. But um, it was all offensive line stuff. Buffalo, it was Pat McCary uh, wanting to play quarterback and acting like Lamar was a receiver, throwing the ball over his head. Um, 2021, uh, it was offensive line just letting Jock straight through. And then he got Lamar, sort of twist his ankle a little bit. And then uh, 2022, uh, it was, oh, the I think it was a backup tight end, like blocking a DN. Um, just let him right pass, and he just wall walloped Lamar. So, but anyway, um, he said, uh, at some point, you have to realize you're not bigger than the Ravens. Well, Lamar Jackson, what, like 6'3", 6'2", 6'3", like 220. So that one man alone versus just 52 other men on the roster Yeah he not bigger than them And then you got like 16 on the practice squad But I know you're not talking about literally You're talking about figuratively Which I, I get it I just had to throw in a little dad joke Just to loosen you up a little bit um, Now you're not, You gotta realize you're not bigger than the Ravens If you went to ESPN uh, FS1 NFL Network any, any of these sports talk shows um, Do you think a segment do you think a segment that talked about the Baltimore Ravens uh, would bring in more ratings or a segment that talked about Lamar Jackson? That, that's, that's up to you. That, you. Only you could decide that. You, just let me know what you think. But I, but I think you are talking more figuratively. He's not bigger than the team. No one man is bigger than the team. And, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a team game. It's a team effort. It takes everybody. Um, but at the same time, one man can change the trajectory of an entire franchise. And that's exactly what Lamar Jackson did. As we all know. As we all know. Like, you could say this and that, and you could say whatever you want about him, but every, not even just Ravens fan knows, but everybody knows Lamar Jackson changed the direction that the Baltimore Ravens were headed. And that's clear as day. Um, yeah, they, they, in the playoffs, they got to be better. They got to be better. Um, but he certainly changed everything about how the Ravens were operating. But anyway, uh, he, said, he said, we will be the Ravens with or without you. You're right. Ain't no arguments there. They will be the Ravens with or without Lamar. They have been the Ravens with or without, without Lamar Jackson. Only way they wouldn't be the Ravens would, they, would, they be, would be if they changed their name. That would be it. But they would certainly be the Ravens. They, they would have that same philosophy. Well, as long as Harbaugh is in charge, they will have that same philosophy. I've been hoping that they would upgrade that philosophy a bit, but... Hey, it is what it is, but yes, that, that part is true. And that, I mean, whether good or bad, they will still be the Ravens. So he's spot on about that. He said, I love Lamar, but no player can stop what we've built. We run the ball, play defense, and that's where the money goes, period. Ooh, I love that last part because it was so true. He said, that's where the money goes, period. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, you see Marcus Williams. Oh, that boy got his bread. And he he's been worth it. He he had been great for the Ravens this year. Oh man, I just imagine like if he wouldn't have got hurt uh with his wrist injury. Oh man. 
Uh, you see Roquan Smith. He just got paid. He been here since what? Week nine, I think. No, before week nine, because the trade deadline is week eight. But he he got paid. So Ravens took care of him. Um, you see, uh, obviously Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey. Um, they put the, the the first round draft pick for Kyle Hamilton. They also did for Tyler Linderbaum too. But more so money. Let's talk money. Money. Calais came. He making a significant amount of money. Um, that's where a lot of the Ravens that their money goes on defense. On offense, Mark Andrews got paid, so that was nice. Tight end. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, he got paid. Um, who else? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, when it comes to like wide receivers and stuff, the Ravens, uh, we ain't got it. Oh, uh, Hollywood, what? You buy. You you can get traded. Um, when we when we gonna go shopping there? Oh, Sammy Watkins, a little one year, six million dollar deal, five mil guarantee. You know, the Marcus Robinson, a little one one year deal. Uh, cheap. I, it's some super low. Um, what has it been? Willie Sneed. I mean, just I'm just thinking over the years, but like you said, um. We run the ball, play defense, and that's where the money goes. Period. Um, so yeah, yeah, you you were right. I I can't argue that last part at all. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean, patron. My guy, Lakendrick. Kendrick. He been a, been a patron for about a month, so I appreciate that. He said, "What's up, engraving the team? Keep it clean." This is no question per se, just a rant. Uh, this is the night before the week eighteen finale. Oof, oof. <laughs> Eek. <laughs> he said, "I've come to the conclusion, Ravens." Got to pay up to keep Lamar No ifs, ands, or buts They shelved his career and potential The last couple of years By not providing for him adequately They are the reason uh, Majority of why he is hurt Yes, I'm putting it all on them They bargain bend him With the weapons placed around him Wow we we're just literally talking about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said he has proven his worth. No sense in trying to have him come back at this point. I say continue to have Lamar out uh, of play the rest of the season, especially with the bargain offense they built for him. Oh, and he put built for him in quotations. So just so you know, it's not really built for him. It's built for them. Uh, anyway, he said, and see where it lands for this year. In the playoffs or not, I don't want to see Lamar injure himself any more than he is already. Uh, Ravens just have to bite the bullet and pay up. Let the philosophy they have going go. Say the heck with those picks and get that guy at wide receiver and value the position. Change coaching and start fresh next season. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You know that ain't happening But anyway He said um, Yeah we in But no reason for Lamar To risk further injury Ravens just got to take What they can get out of The rest of the season Without Lamar at this point They might not have a choice It's looking like They might not have a choice Hopefully uh, After this week We can be talking about The Ravens going into Next week In the playoffs too But we'll see Let's see um, He said All these reports Saying he might be Trying to sit out Because of the contract So uh, if I'm him, I'd be like, where are all the reports of this bargain offense? They have me behind uh, wide receivers, not taking anything from the unseasoned guys. Uh, they painting him in a negative light. I can't stand it. He's proven himself. Uh, I stand by it. Don't take the field today backing up the Brinks truck with D-Hop or some proven wide receiver driving him. I feel better now, LOL, that I got this off my chest. And Graven stay blessed, big bro. I appreciate you, man. I'm glad you got to get it off your chest, too, my friend. Um, Yeah, I mean, again, Lamar, it seemed like he was endorsing uh, the the Jim Trotter comment when he was saying that it's not about the uh, contract, it's really about the injury. Um, but still, like, yeah, it's not looking like he's even gonna be out there. Um, we were led to believe that this injury was a lot more minor uh, from jump, um, and it wasn't. Um, so that's why I, I just with all the fans i remember so many saying oh man this reminds me of last year from from beginning so many ravens fans said that when lamar first went out and Hobbs first talked about the injury so many Ravens said, oh man this this reminds me of last season this reminds me of last year when lamar oh uh, they said it was a week-to-week -week injury they said oh it wasn't nothing crazy he never played another snap again for the rest of the year so it's eerily similar hopefully though um this season i mean it already hasn't ended like last season because we missed the playoffs last year made it this year but hopefully they can just make some miracles happen next question came from another team keep it clean patreon my guy king terrence he said first off how you and the fam are doing we're doing really good I, I appreciate that he said second i was wondering how would you feel if lamar decided not to come back and play in the playoffs because of the contract situation me personally wouldn't be mad at him thanks for the content my guy and keep up the work Ah, uh, mm, this has been a topic of conversation. And again, like we just said, it seemed like Lamar was really endorsing uh, what Jim Trotter said about the fact that it's not about the contract. Um, but if it was, if he was like, you know what, I'm not going to play through this injury and, uh, because I'm not paid yet, um, that wouldn't even... 
that wouldn't even be a negotiation. That would just be like, look, I'm not paid, so why force myself out here? Um, and I, I would just be like, okay, okay. It, it, as a as a fan, because I see a lot of fans. Oh man, it's a PCL, and he can play through that. He needs to get out there on the field, buddy. Get out there and play, man. Um, I see a lot of fans saying that stuff. Um, but then when you think about the long term, yeah, you think about the long term. Think about it. If you were at your job uh, and you were making like bare minimum, you were making bare minimum, but you supposed to be paid up there with a lot of the top guys. And you might be sick or something. You, you, you're you sick. You're really sick. And your job is like, oh, you making bare minimum. Even though you're supposed to be paid with these top guys, you need to still come in. You need to still come in, even though you're sick. You're going to force yourself to come in, even though you're making a bare minimum. That, that's the best way I, I could put it for you. Um, but, yeah, that's that. So, I, yeah, I, I, I would be mad at it. I would get the business out. Wow, next question came from my guy, Nick Brick, who's been a patron for two years. I appreciate you. He said, playoffs. It's been a long season, but I'll, I'll be sad when it's over, so I'm going to enjoy it no matter what. Exactly. I, I agree 1,000%. Uh, I wanted to ask a quick question about good old Giro. Obviously, last week, they were keeping the offense very vanilla and simple. No QB runs, double fake screen reverses, uh, or the 45 <laughs> fake jet sweeps. Between what we've seen in the preseason and what we saw yesterday, I kind of like this offense better. It was rough at times, but they moved the ball well. Guys were getting open, and they didn't make every single play look like look so difficult uh with that being said am i tripping for wanting greg roman to actually put plays back in the vault and just play this version of the offense with our best guys um i, I feel like uh with the offense last week um against the Bengals, yeah they, they were moving um they just there were a lot of opportunities they just straight up missed um there were drops and drops and drops. Uh, there were some bad throws by Anthony Brown. There was an interception. There was a drop that led to an interception. Um, there was the uh, the lack of awareness on that fumble in the end zone. With, but, I mean, Ronnie Stanley just got beat from jump. So, <laughs> it's, just, it's tough. Like, what can you really do? Because um, you're trying to push the ball downfield, but you ain't got no time because your franchise left tackle just got dogged from beginning. Um so, but overall, like, yeah, the offense, that's why I say if, if, if I'm the Ravens, I, well, I want them to start Anthony Brown over Tyler Huntley for the playoff game. I know it's like, it's risky, but I mean, starting Tyler Huntley be risky. I know some people be like, oh, well, Anthony Brown ain't got no experience. He doesn't. Uh, Tyler Huntley got about, what, a quarter, a quarter and a half, something like that, a playoff experience. I forgot what quarter Lamar got knocked out in the Buffalo game, but I mean... Yeah, the, the, I, 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 would, I would just do it, man. And, and the thing about it, I, I feel like the Ravens' offense last week against the Bengals, they didn't even put everything out. Well, they didn't even do everything that they could possibly do because they were missing. A, they had a lot of guys sitting like J.K., Mark Andrews, Kevin Zyla. But then at the same time, Anthony Brown didn't run. I don't remember him running like taking off not once. If he did, I don't remember. But he wasn't. And if he did, it wasn't like that. Like this dude was not running the ball like at all. He was not running. So if you can add, if you add that element to the offense, it'll take off a little bit, and it's like, oh, okay, we got a, a, just another little wrinkle in here. I think it gives you a better opportunity against Cincy. Next question came from my guy, Nova, who's been a patron for four months. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, he said, I just saw the question from a subscriber video that has someone blaming the owner, Steve Vashadi, for this ineptitude. I had planned to write a, a, a novel. Spoiler, I did the novel anyway. Drawing blame to him, but he answered so well. I feel like I just need to double down as well as a cynical resolution uh, to the Lamar situation. All right, here we go. So let me... Get a little more comfortable because this uh, I saw all the paragraphs in this one and it's going to be a long one. Anyways, so no matter who you blame for the Ravens' faults, the players, Lamar, Roman, McDonald, Harbaugh, EDC, this all points back to Steve and why our team is so underwhelming. I'm convinced Steve has three pleasures, watching the 2000 Ravens highlights, saving money, and losing close. Uh, as an owner, you have the checkbook, which dictates uh, so much. So the fact that you are okay with this mediocrity means you don't have any intentions of building a championship team. So, yeah, like we talked about before, um, and I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, but it's the truth. Like owners, their biggest thing is to make money. That's it. The, 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 the biggest thing is not to win championships, not to um, get Super Bowls. I mean, those are nice, obviously, but their biggest thing is that if they're making money, they're happy. And these owners are making a lot of money. And especially if your franchise, like if, if, if even if you have a losing franchise, you're making money. But if you have a franchise like the Ravens who's winning, they, yeah, they won two Super Bowls a while back, but they've been competitive. So they've been in the thick of thing, getting a primetime game, selling a bunch of merch and stuff like that, getting a lot of buzz around the league all the time. You're getting attention to the team. You're making money. 
You're making money. So we as fans, we want our team to win a Super Bowl all the time to be to go all out. But owners are like, hey, we, if we making money, we straight. And Bashadi said it himself. He was like, um, what do you say? Consistency is better than being great. He said something like really, really, really extremely close to that. And when he because when he was talking about John Harbaugh, watch the um the episode of the Marlon Humphrey thing where he was interviewing uh Steve Bashadi, and he, he was talking about Harbaugh. Uh, so you can see exactly what he said. But anyway, um. He said, to bring it home, I'll just explain what Steve accepts within the team. EDC isn't Howie Roseman, but come on. You have big shoes to fill following Ozzy's footsteps, but the assumption is you learn from mistakes, not double down on them. Unlike Ozzy, who has some hits and drafts and free agency, but couldn't get adequate receivers, EDC doesn't get wide receivers or any outstanding picks, and the free agents have been okay or meh. Uh, but of course, this won't change as long as G you GM, as long as you're GM too. Uh, as, but of course, this won't change as long as you GM to lose like Steve tolerates. Oh, as long as you GM to lose. Oh, well, oof, wow, that's powerful. He said, next we have Harbaugh, who is our accountability dodgeball champion. Harbs is a great coach, but when will some heat be put on his chair in order for him to start coaching and less supervision of your coordinators? Now, as head coach, you have the ability to intervene if a coordinator is having a bad day. So hearing these press conferences where you direct blame uh, to your coordinators and give post-game reactions rather than in-game proactive changes is inexcusable. I absolutely love that part. I, I, I love that part. That's the same thing we talked about like a week or two weeks ago. Um... Cause, cause Harbaugh, yes, he does that a lot. Where they talk about, oh man, well, if we look back, we we should we probably should have done this. But it's like, hold up, y'all were in the game, y'all were watching this happen, and y'all didn't do it. But anyway, um, he said, uh, but of course, this won't change as long as you coach to lose close, like Steve tolerates. For McDonald, I can't blame, I can't blast him as much as it's his first year. But Roman has no lifelines, no way you're an offensive coordinator, but only have success in your first season. All of the successful coordinators make uh, schemes to co to complement their stars, but they can adjust as things happen. Uh, meanwhile, Roman schemes to contradict his stars, and McDonald doesn't close doors on games and adjust as much. But of course, this won't change as long as you scheme to lose close, like Steve tolerates. Mm. Yeah, because not putting guys in position to have the best success that they possibly can. Uh, we've seen it a lot. I think you got my point of view, uh, but let's get to my other point. What would the Ravens do about Lamar? Let me know how probable you see this happening. Baltimore trades Lamar to Chicago for Justin Fields, Eddie Jackson in a 2023 third, fourth, and a 2024 first and third. You can adjust the draft capital, but this is something I'd expect them to pull. Oh, man. Um, initially, when you say that, like initially, it sounds crazy, like trading Lamar for Justin Fields. But then you mention a defensive player too. But that's a, ain't Eddie Jackson a safety though, right? They already got uh, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams. But it would be adding more to the defense, and you know the Ravens. But but just the the Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields part. Um, it. Let's keep reading though He said Eddie Jackson Will replace Chuck Clark I get Oh See I should have kept reading He said I get it We have Hamilton and Williams But the Ravens like Having safe, safety depth And Eddie is definitely nice This team opens the floodgates For defense So uh, while this doesn't Have much logic It's a move Baltimore would do Fields works Because it allows Roman To get his extension And justify Steve Paying Roquan And getting some 2012 MVP wide receivers And free agencies <laughs> Alas, with Fields on a rookie deal, it buys time for Steve too. We downgrade on offense, but hey, we have money left over to get us a linebacker and free agency rather than address the holes we have. Oh man, this 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 hurt my heart reading it because, like I said initially, it sounds crazy, but then when you really think about it, and that's the part you mentioned it um, about Justin Fields being on his rookie deal, and Justin Fields being a, a quarterback that could take off too. Um, mm. It's, it's, it's kind of sad, man. Uh, I don't think it will happen, but it's it's not as far fetched as initially you would think. Um, but anyway, he said for Chicago, the new coaching staff may not have seen enough to like Fields, and with all that cap room, they can afford Lamar. With the number one pick, they could trade to an NFC South team for extra picks and players since they're thirsty for a good quarterback, giving Lamar some additional personnel to work with, maybe even wide receiver. He's not used to having uh, wide receivers and def the defense that won't do him any favors, all familiar things. Oof. Man. The boy Nova ain't playing, man. Uh, and Chicago would have no major quarterback contender in the division once Rodgers leaves. I mean, even with Rodgers, it's been rough this year. But anyway, uh, while I don't believe 
they would do this trade the uncertainty we know this shows this is some type of move they would consider why because losing closest was steve tolerates and he will find out uh, that what one owner won't do Another one will uh, He will come out saying They were close to getting Lamar What he asked for But they couldn't agree on guaranteed money Meanwhile about seven other owners Won't care about any of that And are waiting for Lamar to be available So they can recruit him We shall see though Thank you for all you do Wishing you and the other members well this year Oh man you that, Yeah that was powerful man I um and like I said initially when I first started reading like Justin Fields for Lamar oh that sounds crazy but then when you break it down and really think about it and think about how the Ravens have operated it don't sound so far fetched. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. Ain't no chance what I mean. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Question From Subs Where you can ask any question you want to and we answer in a video like this uh, If you want to be a part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons You can send your question directly on Patreon uh, For everybody else, if you want to be a part of it You can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com Don't send it anywhere else That's it, if you send it anywhere else Your question will be it won't be <laughs> That's it It just won't be You won't see it It won't see the light of day But anyway Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron My guy Plex He said The grass isn't always purpler On the other side uh, You made a good point During the live stream Someone in the chat mentioned How we could have drafted Some player I can't remember who And you basically said There's no guarantee That they will be the same player Oh yeah uh, We in this live stream We were talking about uh, Stefan Diggs uh, And Cooper Cup and um, I think maybe I think maybe somebody might have brought up Justin Jefferson too, but I, it was mainly about Stephon Diggs and Cooper Cup. And I was saying like, like yeah, those guys are who they are. They're nice, excellent wide receivers, great wide receivers. But if the Ravens would have drafted them, they would not be nice. They wouldn't. They would not have been nice because that's just how the Ravens are. They don't bring the most out of wide receivers like that. But anyway. Um, he said, that's something that I think about all the time. Being drafted to the right team. Oh, that's so important. That's so, imp that's so important, man. And it can like, it change, it can change everything about your career in a good way or a bad way. Uh, he said, being in the right system and being surrounded by coaches that can develop players is extremely important, man. Yeah. I, uh, 1000%. Uh, it's easy to say we could have drafted uh, Amon Amonra St. Brown over Brandon Stevens. Would Amonra still be the sun god or would he have been eclipsed by the system? <laughs> uh, he said fans say we should have taken DK or AJ o o over Hollywood. DK would have been Miles Perryman for us. Hold up. Don't, don't, do, don't do my guys like that. Um, AJ would have been good, uh, but he would have wanted to, but we wouldn't have wanted to pay him and he would have been traded. Yeah, I I, th I I don't think he would have been as good as he was with Tennessee, but I, I think he would have been straight, though. I think he would have been straight. The same thing that happened to him in Tennessee. At receiver, I see no positive outcomes with players we could have taken. Uh, yeah, that's that's very, very powerful right there. Um, But it's true. It, it's, it's all about being at the right place, right time. All right, next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, uh, my guy Mari, who's been a patron for four months, so I appreciate it. Now, his first question came on January 6th. Um, this was from the Steelers game, I believe. He said, hey, fam, just wanted to check in uh, with you and let you know I went to the game, and it was amazing, bro, but something I noticed, when players get traded or end up leaving the program, the media team is usually on board, and they know what's going on. Uh, at the game, not once did they show their MVP quarterback on the jumbo trine, but they kept showing Calais Campbell. He said, also, well, I mean, hey, I mean, they, they had a the little card that they made uh, after, what was that game that they won on the 24th? Who did they play? Was it the Falcons? And Lamar wasn't on there. But I know some people were like, oh, well, he didn't play. So that's why he wasn't on the call. Oh, okay, cool. And some people were like, oh, y'all are looking too, too into it. And then <laughs> and we, ain't, we ain't seen the Lamar still play since. Um, but and, and we'll see what happens this offseason. But, yeah, they there has been a lot of subliminal stuff. It's been a lot of subliminal stuff um, with the Ravens, with the media. I mean, y'all saw Roquan's presser yesterday. I said, ooh, ooh, Roquan, they paid you, so they got you talking, huh? They got you talking, but I was like, whoa. But anyway, um, 
this is still also from January 6th. He said, also, how isn't Lamar up for the Do It All Award that the Ravens are having us vote for? I don't know how you don't class him as someone who does it all. We are horrible without him. This thing has gotten ugly, and I'm tired of hearing the media say that the Ravens are a class company when they are obviously showing otherwise. Harbaugh has been throwing subliminal in the media, and I would love to have Sean Payton as our new head coach to elevate Lamar. Michael Vick talked about how Andy Reid elevated his career. I think it's time for an offensive-minded guru. Let me know what you think about that. Oh, well, yeah, with Sean Payton, it would be cool, but Ra- Ravens aren't giving up draft picks to get a coach I, Ra- ravens would never do that how much they love draft picks they would never uh now this e- next question is from january 11th he said man i hope all is well my guy what do you think about the ravens teaming up lamar with an offensive guru like eric Bieniemy or sean payton or even sean McVay? so with the two sean's you got to trade draft picks to get to get either one of them eric Bieniemy, i would not be mad at that at all uh, he said with this Bengals game coming up i feel like if lamar was paid he would play but uh, it will still be hard for him to thrive in an offense that is run first. We need to open up the passing game because it also allows Lamar to not use his legs as much. Preserve the man for the future with the structure of the offense and start investing more into that offensive line. Mm-hmm. Preserve him for the future. Yes. You, you see it. You see how they did Lamar. You see how they did Tyler Huntley. Like literally like running this man into the defense. Like literally right into the defense. Over and over and over and over and over. Coincidence that his his throwing arm is hurt now? Uh, you tell me. But anyway, uh, oh, and the last thing, I think it's funny that Bengals are mad about Uncle Ro. I play college football, and that's all psychological warfare. Things like knocking the ball out of the player's hands when the player's over, rolls over into the next game, and gives you a defense bully energy, believe it or not. That's what we need. Let me know what you think, man. LOL, I'm out now, brother. Appreciate you, Mike. And, and hey, yeah, that's right. That's, um... I was telling somebody, I was having a conversation with somebody, I forgot who it was, but I was telling them, like, man, like, the the Ravens are already in the Bengals' heads right now. They're in their heads right now. Say, oh, yeah, Ravens played dirty, yeah, we got something for that, and da-da-da-da. It's like, okay, well, yeah, Ravens are, if that's what they were trying to get, they got it. Next question came from another team, keep it clean, patron, my guy, Lord Valley. He said, what's up, playoffs is here. Looking at the last game highlights, yeah, we had four turnovers, but we hurt ourselves on defense, and it's the little mistakes that hurt us bad. It's true. It's true, them turnovers. So, first drive, we made JB look like Eli Manning, the saving 11 yard sack on second and eight. Uh, next, we have Hurst looking like Jamal on third and three catch. Fast forward, Kyle Hamilton came in too fast and missed the eight yard sack on the, on the 50 on third and 10 over pursuing, resulting in a 20 yard pass to Boyd ending in a mixing touchdown. Next, we had uh, the Hilton interception ending in a chase touchdown, uh, Moss on Worley. Next, we go fail the fourth down on Bengals' 26-yard line. Uh, Could have been 3-17. Then the fumble touchdown. We get the fumble turnover in the eight. Roman called three passes and no run, so now we could have had 17, but it's 10-24 in the third quarter. And then your boy Sammy fumbles. So, yeah, I'm not worried about Sunday night going for a strong win, even without Lamar. Uh, yeah, you brought up some – yeah, you, I mean, you brought up all the highlights, but um, – well, really the lowlights for the Ravens. Um, the, the turnovers just killed them. Straight up. He said, the only thing I realized in game one is the Roman has a lot of rollout plays for Lamar, which kept the defense stagnant, eating clock with dump offs you know, on uh, an injury and injured Dobbins. And remember, there was no Roquan in that night game. Oh, so I expect a huge game from him with that honey bun in the bank. Uh, so Huntley or Brown, we can get it done. Brown. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.